terms of uh, maintenance of the requirements, obviously that means that you have any changes coming through into the requirements. You've got some things that need to be deleted. Some features need to be removed from the product. Um, some features need to be added in addition. All of those is basically what we call as maintenance, right? Management of requirements. So why do you need to do that? So it is important that we need to understand when and why they changed. So that is really important because if you want to trace it back in, or going back to the traceability of requirements, the reason why that knowledge is important is because you would then be able to understand where the impact is. If you make this small little change in this requirement, what are all the other artifacts that you need to go back and change or that needs that get affected because of this change in the requirement? Because it's all interrelated, isn't it? So this requirement has been realized, this particular requirement or a feature, for example, a report, create this report of uh, customer, new customer acquisition report or um, the sales forecast for the next uh, three quarters or something like that. If you have got a requirement like that, it is realized in perhaps in the architecture and then you've got data elements, you've got um, uh, into the uh, actual development of the code, into test cases, you write so many test cases. If there's any small change here, then obviously they all would get impacted. So we need to understand what are all the areas, what are all the artifacts and all the elements of the code design aspects that get um, you know, impacted. Because it's really important to have that in the sense that um, we've got these teams uh, rolling and people coming in and out of the teams and also even products changing so rapidly. For example, you've got this done, this particular report of, uh, of the customer acquisition, um, which was developed and deployed into the build in, uh, for example, in April. And then after about a year, if you want to understand, if you want to say that if you want to make any changes into that, and that's not really um, you know, reflecting on your uh, requirements or on the report, then that's a huge problem. So you need to understand which all things have to be changed in order to accommodate the new changes into the requirements. So very, very important that you understand this traceability, the maintenance properly, so you can go and change where it is, um, it is captured. If you don't have that, then obviously there is no point and, and the testing team will not be able to understand what to test. And, and so also the development team will not understand uh, where the code um, needs to be changed, which block of the code has been implemented to address this requirement. There's no such correlation anywhere. And, um, and also obviously that means that, that means that the testing would not be done properly. And if the testing is not done properly, then obviously that would result in a lot of problems and defects again. So very important that we capture all of this um, into the aspect of requirement management, a better requirement management processes, proper documentation, doesn't mean spending too much time and, and effort and money into that, but essentially it can be lightweight in the context of the agile working nowadays, but still there needs to be some method to the madness, some way that we do this in whatever little way that we can do, we still have to do this. And, and otherwise we lose that sense of um, handle on the requirements and how they are actually captured. So again, um, if we think about, for example, if you've got a, a, a billing system, right? In, in a bank that has a, or an invoicing system in an organization that needs to be fixed, right? So you've got all these different business rules of how to uh, compute or how to come up with a final insurance quote of some, you know, of some actuarial stuff or how to come up with their insurance quote for your home or for your car. There are so many factors that need to be considered in and the variables that need to be considered in. If you do not have a proper sense of uh, uh, understanding in terms of where these are captured, what business rules are, are, are uh, affecting what code and what design, then obviously when you try and, uh, uh, when the rules change, the business rules change, when the taxes change, when the variables change, uh, when, the, for example, the interest rate changes or when some of the factors that contribute to this quote changes, then you, know, you don't have a clue as to where that is actually captured and how that needs to be changed or where that needs to go. Where do you need to refer to that business rule? Where is that business rule in the first place? You don't have a clue. So it's important we have got that firm hand on the, on the nerve in terms of where that particular aspect of uh, the requirements has been captured, how is it done? And then you can actually make any changes that you have coming in your way. In terms of the maintenance of requirements, the input output diagram, obviously we have the requirements and design coming in as inputs. And then within this activity, you've got the 
information management approach because maintenance requirement is all about communication. It's all about ensuring we have uh, the correct information, the correct place to the correct level of detail. And that's what is all about information management approach that we had looked at um, in, the, in the previous uh, set of um, uh, knowledge areas. So that essentially is going to be one of the key factors that is important for us. And once we have that, we, we manage the requirements better. We maintain them in a way that is very um, easy to uh, accommodate any changes later. And so once that is done, we have got the maintained requirements as, as the output from 